Hey everyone, welcome to Ask Julie Anything tonight. Tonight we're doing our first of the month episode where Julie comes on live, she takes your questions, you get the mic, and we do a one-on-one -on -one session with Julie. Totally intimate, this is a safe space, no judgment, any question goes. Um, we're gonna hang out for the next hour. If you can hear us, let us know in the chat, that'd be great. And if you wouldn't mind changing your settings in the chat to all panelists and attendees so everyone can join the conversation, That'd be really awesome. Q&A, add your questions to the Q&A area. There should be a little tab at the bottom of your screen. Submit your Q&A there. And if you feel comfortable, I'd be happy to give you the mic permissions in and you can have a one-on-one -on -one chat with Julie. Without further ado, what do you say? Should, should we get going, rocking and rolling? Hi, everybody. So, so tonight, I wanna ask, um, how it's so weird, eh? Like, I feel like we've just gone around in a circle again. And um, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to, I'm talking about COVID and stuff and I, and the stress that comes with it and the stress about our animals and, and all of that stuff. So I think first of all, I would love for you guys to put in the chat how everybody's feeling, who's stressed out, who's, who's kind of not as stressed as, it, as they were when it first happened. So, so it's sort of like, okay, well, it's happening again. So, so we're sort of old hats at this. Um, so <laughs> uh, just, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm just want to touch base to um, very, very stressed. Okay, lots of people stressed. Keep put, I wanna look frustrated starting over. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is open the chat. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in healthcare, very stressed, stressed out about my parents' health. Uh, anybody stressed out about their animals' health or how you're gonna cope with, um, um, you know, dealing with like possible food shortages or did anybody even go through that before did anybody go through um uh you know did anybody go through um not being able to get the food that they're normally on or not being able to um just feel like you can go out and just get your animal what they need like i know i know for for um over here a lot of people were super stressed out because you weren't allowed to go in with them you had to actually wait in the car or or you weren't even if you had to go to the vets you weren't even be um, allowed to be with your animal so i wanted to kind of look at that i'm so stressed out about sourcing emu yeah the only protein i can eat um overwhelmed with daily life routine six dogs wow two but bought dehydrated for a couple of months just in case that's good so stephanie you're looking at all this right yeah i've got eyes and we've got q a coming in as well okay good i have a liver tumor currently treating holistically very concerned about my pet's health all right so so i guess what i want to do is i want i would like to just we're gonna we're gonna get question we're gonna get to the question so don't worry but I think um, I think I'm looking just at the questions too uh, okay so let's let's um, let's do a little uh, um, tiny session about what we can do from a perspective to keep our immune system healthy and our pets immune system healthy right now and everyone knows i'm going to probably talk about gut health a little for a tiny bit um because it really is important because we all know that it's 80 percent of our immune system right so with covid and with any kind of viruses and and specifically covid because it 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 focuses or it, it it plays around with our histamine response. When our histamine response is the is the part that if you got stung by a bee or or um, you, when your histamine levels go up. So what we want to do is with our animals and ourselves when we're in times of stress or in times of viral heavy viral loads, um, we want to keep our gut microbiome super duper duper healthy. 
and we want to keep our liver really healthy because our liver sort of metabolizes and supports the way our histamine works. So keeping our liver healthy, drinking lots of water, um, uh, making sure that we're getting, uh, you know, your and your animal is getting things with really high abilities to scavenge free radicals. So um, lots and lots and lots of antioxidants and, you know, eating as healthy as we can and um, our structure for us personally, because if we're stressed, our animals are stressed. It just, that's just what happens. So um, making sure that, you know, that you guys are taking ashwagandha, your, um, you know, if you have a really, really, really good reputable source of CBD, that you're taking CBD, that you're meditating, that you're spending. For me, I mean, if, if people are gonna have, if we have to start going into lockdown, then, um, really, really trying to pay attention to it. it, For me, what happens with COVID that I think is beneficial for all of us is it, it forces us to, I always say, uh, re-engage or um, cozy back up with our other senses. So when we're going through life on a day-to-day basis, when we're not when we're not in lockdown or we can't go out as much, we run a lot on our, on our um, one part of our brain that doesn't use a lot of intuition. So it's the part of our brain that we have repetition and we have to keep, um, keep ourselves amused. And it, it, it's a part of the brain that needs to have stuff done to it. And that's what a, the majority of us run around doing until we're forced to slow down. So mindfulness and lots of stuff that you've heard way, way before COVID um, is, a, is a practice to be more in the moment, but I want to look at it as being mindful, but also using and strengthening our senses. So when I'm looking at my cat right now as an example, and instead of just me looking at him, I can literally look at my cat and look back, I know it's my cat, but if I look at my cat and really notice like how his black stripes of the tabby part intermingle with the with his sort of taupey colored brown, how his ears are flicking right now when because he's listening, just how this light that is in front of me shines off of him. I can look down at my other dog and I can watch the way he's breathing and I can watch like you can smells, right? Like I can sit here and talk to you guys and and be super engaged with you guys and not smell the fire, right? So if I'm really still, I can smell the fire. Now, what does this all have to do with anything? Is it's an amazing way to decrease your stress, increase our intuition and really, really strengthen the part of the brain that gets flaccid that is linked to memory loss alzheimer's um lots and lots and lots of age diseases depression anxiety all of that stuff so this is our opportunity to reconnect with our intuition and then when we come back out of it and believe it or not when we can reconnect with our intuition we really 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 reconnect with our animals so spending way more super focused time on our animals looking at things that that we don't even have time to look at when when we're busy running around um and when we can reduce our stress levels we definitely reduce our animal stress levels and um that in itself will help with viruses exponentially because when we're really really stressed our bodies are in fight or flight when we're in fight or flight we can, all that they're thinking about is that we're getting eaten, eaten by a saber-toothed tiger. So we want to run and we want either want to run or we want to fight. There's no focus on immune system. There's no focus on health or healing. So the, the stress part of COVID, we really want to have try and support each other as a community. Um, 
to, to not talk about everything that's gone wrong, but help support each other in practices that we can that we can teach each other and support each other oh yes i tried this and it worked or i tried it but i could only do it for two seconds or like tapping um like when we when we think about meditation it's like how do you meditate in when you're that stressed well meditation can literally be five seconds that that five like five seconds of meditation actually changes your 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 heart rate level and when you're meditating when you when you all of a sudden when you think of okay so let's say i'm trying to meditate right now and something comes into my head in the first five seconds that i oh my gosh i forgot to email someone or oh my gosh i forgot to tell emily the girl that works for me to give one of the horses something or something like that just recognizing being present enough in that moment to recognize that you had that thought is meditation because we have so many thoughts that we're not that we don't even know that we're having like 70,000 thoughts a minute or something crazy like that so i just wanted to say that i would like like i know we have our our adored beast um uh, group on on Facebook and I think it would be nice in the next few weeks to to maybe set something up Steph where we can we can start maybe putting some stuff on there about about tapping and um, meditation and making sure that everybody's got uh, means and 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 um, uh, means to to prepare themselves, right? Like we don't want to be focused on, oh my God, we have to like do all of this stuff, but we want the more prepared we are on every level, the less stress we're going to be. So from a, from a food perspective for everybody that's out there, that's, that's on raw food, the dogs are dogs and cats are on raw food. I definitely would say to try and get some dehydrated food um uh freeze dried food i would also suggest to start researching your dry foods right like dry kibbles that are i mean rodney and karen have an excellent what's the best kibbles uh, what's the best and worst kibbles out there take a look at that and then see if you can get bone broth that's even in you know the containers that um uh what are they called vacuum sealed containers what are the what are those called stuff tetra packs tetra packs so so because they don't have to be frozen right so if your freezer is full of stuff because you want to make sure that you've got stuff then you can purchase bone broth tetra packs and i know a couple of of companies um have those like for for animals so that when if if you had to go to dry food then what you can do is you can take you can soak the dry food with bone broth you could use like phytosynergy healthy gut would be the two main things that i would be thinking about so that the healthy gut helps the dry food pre-digest before the dog even eats it so it's bioavailability is way 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 better um you could still do it you could also do it with um freeze dried or dehydrated you could do the same sort of thing you can dehydrate you can rehydrate or reconstitute with bone broth and and what what i'm why i'm saying this to you guys is if you have it stored and you are doing your raw and everything's fine and then all of a sudden you can't then you're not in a panic right you you can you can reach for your little reserve that you had um prepared right same with cats if if you have to if you have to go on something please don't go from raw to dry though with cats um try to stock up with some really good quality canned foods um and that way uh you know with cats what you can do is you could ration your raw so let's say you know it's coming down the tube and you're maybe not going to be able to get your raw like you thought you could then you have a good quality canned food 
you still have your raw food, but you break your raw, like let's say you have a pack of raw food that's like this for your kitty. Semi defrost it, break it into sort of tablespoon servings, so, so smaller servings, refreeze it, and then thaw it and mix it with your canned food. That way they're getting, they're always getting something fresh. And that's way easier to do for cats because it's not as, um, you're not feeding as much raw as you are with a dog. So it's easier to do that with kitties to, to be prepared for something like that. So, all right, well, um, let's, Steph, did you want, do we want to start going into the um, questions now? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, April has been using the, she's been using the kefir mask for two days so far, and she's wondering, she's seeing great results. Like she showed me a picture of the face cloth she's using to pat the dog after the mask has been applied. Okay. She said, any idea how long it can take to work? Um, I remember being in Chicago and a, and a girl showed me this dog with like one of the worst atopic eczemas I've ever seen, um, a pit bull. And I think it, I think she wound up doing it twice a week and it probably took three to four weeks and it was a massive massive difference and it's so funny that she's asking that question because rodney and i were talking today and he's gonna he's gonna do a facebook live mm -hmm. um rodney and i did a facebook live about our our, our mass and now he's got some re actual research showing um confirming that that the the um back the probiotics um actually do work topically so it's awesome because it's confirming what i've said for about three years and he's i think he's gonna maybe do it on sunday you guys should um tune in to that because he's gonna he's gonna show that and i won't i won't wreck his surprise so that you guys <laughs> but today we were working with with one of one of our adored beast um uh probiotics and we have another he's going to show another little trick that that we put together exactly for that so i think he like i said i think he's going to do it on sunday um so you guys should tune into that because it's gonna it's going to alleviate the washing of the mask and the mess and all of that stuff so so that will be fun to watch awesome um, you can find Rodney on Facebook, Planet Paws on Facebook. And um, Crystal, you're asking where you find our face mask recipe. There's the link to our Facebook group and it's posted in the files section. It's a little infographic with the recipe on there for you. And what he's gonna present on Sunday is still our our recipe, but it's it's changed from, it's, an, it's a different recipe. So you can have two, you'll have two now. Excited. Cool. Thanks, Julie. Okay, Crystal, uh, she's got a question. Her almost, oh shoot. Crystal, do you feel comfortable taking the mic? Look at me taking over. Crystal, here, if you want, you can ask your question. I gave you permissions there. You should be Hi. Hey. Thank you so much. Um, so my almost 11 year old Havanese Coco Ella was just diagnosed with yeast in her ears. Um, she's also chewing her paws and her skin is pinkish. Um, we were at her internal medicine specialist who wanted to use antibiotics. I said no, and I immediately ordered the yeasty beast protocol. Um, my question is, Coco has IBD, EPI, chronic pancreatitis, et cetera. Um, and I don't know if I should or can stop healthy gut and or gut soothe since they're helping her digest. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to know what you thought about that. And I also wanted to thank you um, for recommending Andrea Ring to me. Um, okay. It did. I did consult with her and I just received the remedies today. So we're going to be starting them tomorrow. So two things, don't start the yeasty beast and the remedies at the same time. Okay. As what'll happen in that case, like 
like even though you've got our product, I would say start with the remedies first because I'm telling you it's gonna it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna help her exponentially for her pain, her chronic pancreatitis. So um, and then what I would do is once you sort of have that balanced, I wouldn't normally I always say stop, like stop anything with probiotics in it when you do the yeasty beast. But what I would do instead with this because of because of, i would start off with probably i know this sounds crazy but i would start off with an eighth of the recommend recommended dose and i would just add it i would add that eighth of the recommended dose to her um to her daily her daily regime instead okay. of stopping stopping it and just watch because then what that's going to do is it's going to um, um, it will it will help to fight the yeast, but you won't create um, a uh, like a, a Herx reaction, right? Like they won't die too quickly, which is always the concern when you're doing probiotics and a yeast detox. Is that they'll yep. de they'll detox mm -hmm. fast? Okay, so the last thing she needs. That's that's for sure. So I would, um, I would definitely, I would keep her on like liver tonic because that's, that's important when you're, when yeah. you're, when you're dealing with anything like that liver tonic, you don't have to worry about make sure in, in fact, you know, I would, sometimes I was even doing liver tonic three times a day with, with dogs like that. Um, okay. and then I would just start with a tiny little bit and you know what, even you know, when she's so sensitive with her, her pancreas and stuff, do Andrea's remedies for maybe two or three weeks, start an eighth of a teaspoon and go, or an eighth of the amount and only start with the powders to start with. For the yeasty beast? The yeasty beast. Just start okay. with, because the other, like you're already on, like yep. you're already going to be doing liver tonic. Cause I just don't want you to be on too many homeopathic remedies and then you're not going to know what's, what's doing what. Got it. Okay. Did she send you a, an acute remedy? Like in case she got a flare up? Um, yeah. Okay, good. Um, although I didn't talk to her about yeast because this just happened. Mm. Um, yeah, don't, you know what? When, when the body is chronically compromised, so if it's chronic um, pancreatitis or she's not able to digest her food properly, what that means is she, if she can't digest her food properly, she doesn't have the enzymes to digest her food properly, then she's right. not getting her nutrient value to keep her system strong enough to, um, to, to fight off things like yeast or a, a, then what happens is um, uh, pathogens, they, they grow too fast, right? If they're, mm -hmm. if they're, if they're in a chronic, a chronic problem. So when they're kind of doing everything, you're doing everything right. I'm, I'm so happy that to talk to her because what's going to happen is that the remedies are going to strengthen your dog in general, right? The mm -hmm. homeopathy remedies are going to strengthen her constitution. They're going to help her be in less pain, less chronic pain. Cause they, I, I truly believe that when they have chronic pancreatitis, they're always in some, on some level of pain. Yeah. Uh, it's going to help that soon as soon as it really helps with that chronic pain, then her immune system is going to automatically get stronger. So while you're doing that, it's going to help the yeast. Like it, it, it will help yeast. So, because you're going to help your dog in general. Right. And okay. then if you start every second day in, in like two or three weeks with the yeasty beast powder, then I, I would do, like I said, I would do an eighth of a dose and I would do every second day. So yeah. that we're sure that she doesn't have, because she's sensitive, that she doesn't have any kind of reaction to it on any level. And then I would slowly try to get rid of the yeast with her. If you do anything overkill with her or, or very intense, chances are 
she could have a episode with her pancreas, right? Right. Just stress will cause that. So what would be perfect for her right now is what, exactly what we're all talking about is do a topical thing with her. Okay. So on her, on her feet, if you were to use um, um, either Phytos flora or love bugs and you take some kefir and you, you mix it together and you make like a mask and um, it, it helps to eliminate the yeast topically because it, it helps to fight the yeast, right? That's one. The next thing is, I don't know, what are you using in her ears or what did they give you to put in her ears? Um, they did not give me anything. Um, I was using the Zymox enzyme, the one without the phytocortisone. And they got worse, same or better? Um, I think they got a little better. Okay. And you stopped? Yeah. Her internal medicine specialist, um, didn't really see the benefit of Zymox. Unfortunately, I was unable to bring her to see Dr. Roman. So I had to go see her traditional vet just to have this checked. So why he, he didn't think it was helping. Is that what you're saying? He, he said that he, he just, she wasn't familiar with the product and yeah. looking at the ingredients, she didn't see how it would help. And it, to me, it could be she's just unfamiliar with it. But so I would talk to Andre about that. Okay. I mean, I can't, I can't go against your vet. Um, but the well, I mean, Doctor Roman says I can keep using it, so it's my okay. decision. So okay, and I would definitely keep using it because okay. I've used it for years with yeast. Okay. And and, and it's, be, and you know, bless her heart. And I understand that when she looks at it, she probably doesn't understand what's in it that would be effective for you. Right. There's no drugs in it, right? But they have a patent enzyme. So it's almost like an enzyme that eat, eats or destroys or combats the yeast in the ear. Okay. So if it's helping, I would keep using it. If Dr. Okay. Rowan says it's fine, then I would, I would, I would agree with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Your products have made such a difference for her. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you. All righty. Let's see who's next. Roxanne has a question. Okay. Bear with me while I find her name here. Roxanne, if you want to take the mic, you can. I just gave you the talking permission. Three-year-old should use urine. Yeah, that's Roxanne. I don't think the mic's working here for her, but any idea why there would be protein in a three-year-old should use urine? Of course, my vet blames the raw diet. Well, the first thing that you have to do is, if there's protein in the urine, she just needs to do a blood test. Okay. To be sure that her kidney values are normal and everything else is working well in her blood. Because if there's if there's protein in the urine, it should, and it's some it's a concern. If it's concern, it, there should be a um, an elevation in something in her blood, which will then lead you more towards why she has it. It would it would target more why why she has it. Unless, I mean, if she's on there, unless they did, did they do one? Did they do blood tests? Is she? Chatting at the bottom, maybe? No. Roxanne, if you can, if you're here, let us know in the chat. Did you do blood work? I'll look at the bottom of the questions here. No, oh, I don't see anything just yet. Okay, well, we can go back to that. That mm -hmm. would be my that would be my answer to that question is that she needs to do blood work in order to find out the 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 reason that there's mm -hmm. to rule out, oh yes, they did blood work. And they didn't see anything. The blood work was totally normal. Uh, we can come back to that. Okay. Sorry. All right. If the, Sorry, Roxanne. It, um, yeah. I mean, that's, there's a, there's, it also can be at what time of day that, that they did it. There's, there's, there's lots of different fluctuations for, 
the blood work showed no elevation. Beyond... Showed, showed the elevated proteins. The blood work did show. No, okay, yes, did blood work, no, no, blood work showed, oh, blood work showed the elevated proteins. Not the urine, or the urine and blood work. Just gave, just gave them a urine sample. Okay, well, that's good. And there wasn't protein in the urine sample? And is your dog acting normal? Don't know yet. Okay. All right. Um, they've probably done a urine sample to see, I mean, if elevated, the dog's perfectly fine. Elevated protein, it depends on, on showed elevated protein. Well, definitely when you don't need to blame raw food, um, if they're, the easiest thing to do is to fast your dog, take it in and see if it was because your, your, she had eaten just, just prior to having her blood work done because that can happen. And blood tests are different with raw fed dogs. And if vets aren't used to looking at raw fed dog blood work, then they may feel that, that there's a problem. So, you know, you can just do a fasted, a fasted blood work so that she hasn't eaten and, and see the protein levels are the same, but it's, it's, it's almost impossible for me to answer that only because I don't know what was elevated, right? Like, I don't know whether her, her, like what part of her blood work, um, was affected, like if her kidneys are infected or her liver or her, her you know, it, it would, I would have to look at that. But what you should come away with from this is that raw fed dogs blood work does look different. And I think what is the best thing to do is if they're all freaked out that there's the, the dog's fine, then they're all freaked out. Then, then don't feed her like feed her at six o'clock at night and then take her in first thing in the morning and have blood work done before she eats anything. That's, that's the best, probably the best way to, to really see what's going on. Perfect. Thanks, Julie. Kevin's got a question. Kevin, you want to see if your mic's going to work? Kevin, you should be, there you go. Kevin is actually my son and I'm not sure why. Oh. <laughs> um, so I have so many questions and one of the, can we schedule individual appointments with you to answer like too many questions? Uh, no, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not consulting anymore. Um, um, and even Andrea is like at the point, just tell me what's, what's going on. Okay. Just, so okay. in October, I have three dogs, two Vishlas and a Golden, and they suddenly had weird problems they've never had before. I know Goldens are prone to hot spots, but my Golden has never had a hot spot. I'm very careful. I feed raw. He doesn't get anything weird. Uh, my 11-year-old Vishla had an anal gland infection. In 11 years, he's never had them expressed. He's never had an infection. And my 8-year-old Vishla, she had a bad ear infection. So I, I'm using... I unfortunately had to go to the regular primary care vet, but I did also consult my holistic vet. But so I started your immune boost protocol with the um, liver tonic, gut soothe, and phytosynergy. Yeah. How long should I give that, or do you just give that forever? Um, well, uh, I'm just looking at your question actually. And it all happened in October. Yes. And, and cause that's like, whether you stay on the bundle, you use the products or you don't use the products. I would be seriously looking at like, did, did anything get sprayed? Did anything, did, did you change foods? Did anything get no. sprayed outside? No, no. I'm very careful. They don't even walk on any yard that doesn't have a lot of weeds. <laughs> But okay. um, it's weird yeah. that it all three happened in October, it, so I'm just trying is. to detox them. It is. 
no new no new rugs no new couch nope, nothing new same food as always no no vaccines no nothing that's weird very weird mm -hmm. they but all the only thing is we spend part-time in illinois and part-time in colorado and we did go back to illinois for the month of october oh and that's the only difference and is and do you normally go back in october um nothing's normal anymore we we yeah. never spent so much time in colorado but we're in a rural area where we're pretty safe yeah so we're trying to stay longer okay well i mean in october in illinois what was the weather damp rainy damp yeah leaves on the ground yep lots of leaves yeah so leaf mold okay. right mm -hmm. they could they could have run through leaf mold. It was yeah, really that's what I wondered. Yeah, for sure. It 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 was probably something like that. So, um, yeah, the immune bundle is good. I would, I would possibly just talk thinking hot hot spots and what else ears and what else ear infection and an anal gland infection. Yeah, so that He's eleven and never had a problem. Yeah. Okay. So. I would I would add the the powdered um, I would I would add the yeasty beast to that, okay. mm -hmm. and then I would also add phyto phytos flora to that. Okay. But you don't give them all at the same time. So <laughs> it's a lot more cost effective to go to go one day uh, gut soothe, one day phytos flora. One day, um, the the I know when, I know I usually say no probiotics with the with the yeasty beast protocol. Now we've had two tonight, but in this case, it it wouldn't hurt to address yeast, even though you don't know it's right. Yeast. But if you're alternating them like that, then you're not going to have a massive die off either, right? You're not you're not going to have okay. having a huge die off. And then you just alternate the three, but then you always stay on liver tonic and you always stay on phytosynergy. Okay, That's and then you can do that long term, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't stay on you can do phytos flora and gutsu long term. Yes. I wouldn't stay on I would only stay on the because you're gonna do it every three, so that would be that would be three months. Uh probably no longer than th three months three months for the okay. the yeasty beast and then i would take them off it for three months and then you can put them back on it after three months okay and do you does phytosynergy replace omega-3 capsules oh boy here we go um, <laughs> can I, I just not give omega-3s i guess is what i'm asking if i give the phytosynergy you know, if you're, if you're the, the scary thing about omega threes is making sure it's the, it's, it's not rancid and it's right. a really good one. It's hard. It's hard to find a really good one. You know, um, uh, Mercola has a really good krill oil that are you in the U S yes. Yeah. So Mercola, Karen Becker has a really good krill oil. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're going to do an essential, if you're going to do an omega three, I would do krill oil. Okay. I would do, I wouldn't do a fish oil. Um, and if they're in a weird, wacky state right now and, you, and you've had them on omega-3, I wouldn't just drop omega-3. Okay. But what, what you can do probably is you could put them on krill and then you could alternate days. So okay. you could do one day krill, one day phytosynergy, one day krill, one day phytosynergy. You could do it like that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we're doing a study. So that's why I was like, oh, here oh, we go. Okay. <laughs> as soon as, because everybody's asking me that and, and it's just, you know, I can't, I can't say a hundred percent for sure. So we're, Adora Beast is actually conducting a study on that. Great. Thank you. I just love the products. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Susan, if I can find you here. Susan, if you want to ask your question live, I'm going to give you the mic right now. Okay, I think I think you can hear me. Yeah, I can. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. 
That's good. So my question may seem dumb, but I do know a lot of people that feed raw, but everybody does it a little differently. Some people only feed one protein. One, some people feed two or three proteins, but they may do it one week at a time. Yeah. I'm wondering, and almost no one feeds fish. So I was just going to ask you, is there a best way to feed raw as far as the number of proteins and adding in the fish so they get some omegas, et cetera? Um, I think that, that obviously rotating proteins is the best. It's the, it's the best way to try and make sure that they're getting a really large array of amino acids and different kinds of, um, you know, fats and different kinds of different amounts of lysine and the list goes on and on why that's a good idea. When it comes to fish, um, I would only do fast moving fish like sardines, you know, so because there's so when you're when you're purchasing um, when you're purchasing fish, you would have to make sure that in my opinion, that it's wild caught. It's, it's not farmed. And, um, you know, you, you do run the risks of mercury and things like that when they're eating large amounts of fish. So I would say that if you're going to do a fish protein, that it is, a, it, it's a much smaller amount in the rotation. So let's say you're rotating just as an example, pork, uh, buffalo, turkey and I don't know pork buffalo turkey and fish I would do the I would do the pork the buffalo turkey fish pork buffalo turkey pork buffalo turkey pork buffalo turkey fish do you know what I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't yes. do, I wouldn't have the same um, percentage of rotation or if you if you if you want to have fish, the other thing you can do is you can add raw sardines. Like you could add okay. one, one raw sardine a, a day, let's say, in, in in with your pork or in with your beef or in with your bison or in with your buffalo or whatever, what other other proteins that you're doing. Okay, and then I also use the phytosynergy three times a week. Just putting, a, you know, the amount on top. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure if that's a good replacement for doing fish or not. Well, it's, for me, I always love things that are, that are whole food rather than extraction, like, you know, like fish oil and things like that. But what I was just mentioning to the, to the question before that, um, if you're going to do fish, I, I would rather do sardines than even krill, right? Like I okay. would rather, I would rather do um, like a whole sardine because then you're getting mm -hmm. its brain and its eyes and its spine and it, you're getting everything. They're just like raw sardines. And so you're, you're, you're able to give your dog something that's a little bit more naturally species oriented, um, whole so you're you're able to give the organs and everything in it right yeah and actually i do that so good thank you yeah yeah that's a that's a good idea and then when you do the phytosynergy you're getting some you're still getting whole which is the coolest thing and why one of my favorite things on the planet is phytoplankton because when you get that cell when you're when when you or your dog or your cat or your whatever is ingesting the phyto phytoplankton your the body is getting the whole cell so it's getting everything so if that cell had you know the nucleus and the brain and the the blah 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 you're it's not an extracted process where you're just taking parts of a plant or parts of uh, a turkey or parts of a fish or parts of you know, of anything really, right? It's, it's, a, it's a complete whole food nutrition. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Courtney. 
Are you comfortable taking the mic? If you are, go right ahead. Hi. Hi. Hi, Julie. Um, thanks so much for your help with all of these issues. Oh, no worries. Thank you for showing up. I have a little year and a half old male Pomeranian. He's about seven pounds, mm -hmm. um, vasectomized, not neutered. And his two rotating issues are fleas and um, GI flare-ups. Mm. So, I mean, with the GI flare-ups, we've tested him for food allergies and we just did a fecal transplant and it seems to be better, but he just had another HGA incident yesterday. So we're going in for BICOM tomorrow, but he also showed up with fleas a few days ago. There were only four that I found on him. It's gotten pretty cold here, so I was a little surprised. Um, and I have him on the earth animal powder. I've recently transitioned him to raw, which he couldn't tolerate until the fecal transplant. Um, I did have him on Activil before that because even the holistic vets were like, just give it to him if he keeps getting. But I, I don't want to keep giving it to him. And I don't know if there's some other way to bolster his immune system so that he's not hospitable to the Yeah, because obviously his, um, um, his immune system is down if he's getting parasites, right? If he's getting fleas. Um, are you doing anything for the fleas? I have, I treated my condo with flea busters powder. Oh yeah, okay. Um, I have this little like four by four grass patch for him that I spray with that vet's best stuff, the okay. essential oils. I tried putting Wonderside on him, but it just, like he has so much fur. It doesn't seem to be enough and it dries his fur out really badly. So I stopped yeah. doing that. I tried coconut oil. I don't know if that helps. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, I think, you know, what's he like mentally? Like, is he, is he, because he's had a vasectomy, he still will have his emotional testosterone, right? So yeah. is he, is he really wired? Is he, um, is he sexually repressed? Like, does he hump a lot? He doesn't hump a lot. He does really like female dogs, whether they're spayed or not. Um, yeah. My parents have his littermate sister and they have like such different constitutions. My dog sleeps a lot. He's always slept a lot and his sister's like a little firecracker cannonball. Um, she eats a lot more than him and poops less. Like, yeah, he's, he seems kind of lethargic overall. Like just to obviously tested his thyroid, right? Yeah, they ran a bunch of tests when I took him into the ER once. Um, you know what I would do with your dog? Just saying that I would, I would send, I would try to get them to send a blood test to, to um, Hemopet. Hemopet, okay. I think or a, full, his... a full thyroid panel. Okay, full thyroid panel. Yeah, because a dog with his all of his hormones, um, that young being lethargic is, is uh, not lethargic, but like slow and, and large amounts of feces and things like that. That's, that's, that, that sounds very sluggish to me. Yeah. And that sluggishness can definitely come from thyroid and hypothyroid can cause autoimmune diseases. Like, did you say he has hemorrhagic gastritis? Is that what? Yeah. That what? He gets yeah. bouts of it. Yeah. So I would, um, <clears throat> I wonder if Sarah, I know that Andrea is not taking any more cases, but can you put Sarah's, can you put Sarah's thing in the chat? Because yeah. um, hemorrhagic gastritis can be really, really dangerous, right? But uh, almost every single case that I've seen at my practice had an element of emotional, emotional, um, an emotional component to it. Yeah. I'm hoping the BICOM will detect that. Mm hmm Yeah. So, so in a home and homeopathic remedies are just, I can't even tell you for, for that emotional component, it, it can help it can help so much. Like 
mostly all the dogs that I ever worked with, I, I would use a remedy called carcinosin. And um, carcinosin is, is used for cancer or used for autoimmune diseases and used for um, animals that have sort of a repressed or, or suppressed emotional state where they feel like they are. That's the first reason. That's the first thing I thought, because you know what, there are like, I have to be really careful. My dog's not neutered and he will get, if he's, he goes through his sort of male heats kind of, and he humps everything like my cats, the, like just, he's just beside himself. Right. And I have to be very careful with him because he'll get GERD from it. Oh, wow. the, 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 the stress that happens because he can't, he's feeling repressed, I would imagine, um, he will get GERD. So I have to be super proactive with him and, you know, I give him CBD and I give him remedies to calm him down and I do the whole nine yards. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, don't get me wrong. Like I'm not a, I'm not a big spay and neuter component. Like I, I don't, you know, I, I have a, I have a, a strong opinion about that, but I also, um, no, I also know that in the, in the day when we weren't spaying and spaying and neutering and when we were, um, feeling, you know, like that they were healthier with their, with their sex organs, which they definitely are they're breeding right yeah. they were having sex so i don't feel like they had the sexual suppression males way more than females i know lots and lots of intact females that could care less if they ever saw a male <laughs> you know like you know they might they might you know go into a false heat or a, not a false heat, a, a false pregnancy or something but the the desire to have sex I think it, it's, it's much different. I think with, with males, it's, it's a, it's a more repressed, suppressive situation. So for your pup, I would be, um, I would be from a, from a product perspective, I would have, have you tried our gut soothe on him? Yeah, I've used it in emergency situations. Um, okay. Right now he can't be on anything because he still has to do his fecal follow-up after the animal biome. Right. Okay. Um, okay. I have gut soothe, love bugs, and healthy gut in the fridge. Gut soothe, love bugs, and healthy gut. Okay. So for your little guy, healthy gut might be a little bit too strong for him. Okay. Um, he doesn't have pancreas issues, right? It, they found an inflamed pancreas when they checked him, but it was like below clinical levels, but his holistic vet does have him on pancreatrophin by standard process. Okay. Well, that, that's good. That's good. And maybe, maybe a combination, but I would, um, I would definitely have him on phytoplankton. Okay. Um, I actually um, just ordered some on your Black Friday sale. So I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. They, they were doing studies with people with inflammatory bowel disease and hemorrhagic inflammatory bowel disease. With okay. That. And it, it is, it's really, really, really helpful. Gut Soothe is really helpful. And so is Phytosphora because the fulvic and humic acid help to, um, help to detoxify, right? So chelation. And the other thing that it does is it's giving that, that extra probiotic, that, that strain, right? That's, just from a dog so yeah. it's a species oriented and then they they're we're we're actually allowed now by to make health claims with that that it helps the intestinal barrier and it it's an immune modulator so so i mean you know we, we have a really good um return policy like a really really good one it's ridiculous actually um so if you were inclined to you know return the love bugs let's say and purchase a phyto a phytos flora what i would be what where i would be happy with that is because if your dog has an immune 
deficiency or an autoimmune, possibly even more of an autoimmune disease, the fight we can actually say now that it um, has an immune module. We can legally say that we can make health claim that, that it does immune modulation. So when an animal goes on prednisone, they go on prednisone to decrease the immune system because the immune system is too high and causing all kinds of autoimmune diseases like hemorrhagic gastritis or Cushing's or, you know, arthritis and, and the list goes on and on or allergies or, and things like that. So they, they try to, they try to suppress the immune system. They try to bring it down, but then when, when they, well, first of all, it trashes their liver and their gut and everything, but when they bring it down, then they get secondary bacterial infection, which is why they're often on antibiotics and prednisone. But the worst part of that is that when you take them off the prednisone, the body has a natural rebound effect. So it's down, down, down. You're pushing like the water down and then all the water's not going anywhere. It's just getting shoved down. And then as soon as you take the bandaid off or the, 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 the duct tape off being the prednisone, it explodes, right? It, 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 it's like pushing something like this and then taking it off and it goes like that. Are you, are you following me? Mm -hmm. So, so Phytos flora has immune modulation ability, which means that if the immune system goes high, it recognizes that it's going too high and it helps to bring it down. And if it goes too low, it helps to bring it back up. And those studies have just come out, Stephanie, what was that? Six months ago, maybe. So, so um, it would be like any animals that are suffering with allergies or any kind of autoimmune diseases, um, Phytos flora is an incredible, really, really incredible product for them to be on for, to help the body to learn to self-regulate. Okay. Do you think I should return the love bugs or the healthy gut? Cause you mentioned healthy gut might be too strong. Um, no, if he's got something going on with his pancreas, I would return the love bugs because okay. love bugs is in Phytos flora. Okay. Right. And then use he's a tiny dog i would use like literally i would use a sprinkle okay. so take take like literally take your fingers and take the healthy gut and sprinkle it around right and see how he does on it because it it's a it's a really powerful digestive enzyme and it can help exponentially but if you give too much then it can cause diarrhea, right? If the, bo if the body's, if it sort of digests it too fast or too quickly, if an animal's sensitive or their, or their gut is, um, it, it doesn't happen very often. I'm just trying to be the uh, devil's advocate, even if, because it's my own product, but I'm, I'm just trying to think of, your dog has a very specific problem, right? So <laughs> Um, what I would do, that's what I would do is I would just give them small, really small amounts of it in, okay. in every meal, just a tiny little sprinkle. Okay. Thank you. Um, well. do you, do you think colostrum would be helpful? Just as a final question. I do. Yeah, I do. I think colostrum, I think colostrum is helpful if the body, if he's immune compromised, but I find that there's a very gray area when something like this is happening and they're not sure. I mean, unless they've done IgA and, and, and all those tests to see that he's immune compromised, um, then, then I would start off, truthfully, I would start off with the phytosflora first and phytosynergy and see what, see what he's like and maybe give Sarah a call, see if Sarah can get you some carcinosin or something like that. Um, and then, because you don't want to stimulate the immune system if the immune system doesn't need to be stimulated, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good luck. I'm, you know what? I've seen, I've seen lots and lots and lots of these cases, and I've seen them completely turn around, especially him being so young, like lots. Thank you. Thanks, Courtney. I hope. <laughs> I no, no, don't, don't worry. And when you're talking to Sarah, like I think, 
you know, when you're, when you're dealing with something like this, you have to be, you have to be open to looking at, it might not just be a physical thing. It could definitely be an emotional, physical manifestation of the two together. In which case you can manage that. And, um, and also the, the, um, he's young. And I think, I think if we can figure out why, if enough people that are open-minded and work are working together on your dog, there should be no reason why your dog can't get better, especially at his age. Thank you. Okay, don't worry. I have a big smile on my face. You can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Courtney. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Um, Julie, do you have time for one more with Robin? Yep. Okay, Robin. There. Boom. You should have the mic now. How's that? Is that working? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Hi, Robin. Julie, I, you've, I've been such a fan of yours since I heard you speak in Chicago. I'm honored to even be on the a Zoom thing with you. So thank you for uh -huh. what well, you're doing. You. I, I, just, uh, I cried when you spoke. Oh. I was so touched by um, your presentation. So um, I'm the one with the six dogs. Okay. Um, and I've got one question that I had was, do you have just any general advice? I, I think I'm doing pretty good, but my... A little 30 pound uh, nine year old uh, has a complete CCL tear. Yeah. Um, she tore it in September. And I, I, a holistic friend of mine uh, got me to put her on Arnica and Rust Tox at the beginning. And then I have a rehab vet. I don't really have a holistic vet here, but I have a rehab yeah. vet who is doing uh, massage uh, exercises and laser therapy. Okay. Um, she, off the Arnica and the Ruiz Tox. And so I started her on your jump for joy joints. Yeah. Just to kind of be the, the continuity. She's doing really where, well, I've got her, we do about eight or nine exercises a day and she's probably walking on it 80 to 85% of the time without any issue. Okay. Um, I just wondered, you know, they had me give her um, extra omegas so I've got her, I've had her on uh, Dr. Dobias's Feel Good Omegas. Yeah. And then she's on a, a green uh, lipped muscle um, supplement um, for that. But I, I just wondered if you had any general um, advice. I think we're doing pretty good. How but old is she? She's uh, nine years old. Nine years old. Uh, in really good health as far as I know. Okay. Um, and did, did she, did you see her tear it? Uh, I did not, but they were out. My pack of six was out on the acre and they were running with the neighbor's dogs and she came in limping. So I knew when she did it. Okay. And I'm sure that's what she was doing when she did it. I'm sure they were, she, it was when she was running the, the fence line with the neighbor's dogs. And, and what is she? She's called a comfort retriever. She's basically a miniature golden retriever. A min how, how much would she weigh, you think? She's about 29, 30 pounds. A little. And is she, is she fit? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and another thing I gave her, um, the rehab vet was really surprised because she didn't seem to have much inflammation. Um, I had been giving her uh, copaiba oil, Young Living. I use Young Living oils. And I, I take that for inflammation and it had been recommended to me for her. So I was putting that in a capsule um, a couple times a day. So she, she really hasn't had much. I mean, I've not seen any pain or anything like that. And when did they do surgery on her? No, this is no. all conservative management. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. So yeah, cause anything, any t kind of tears like that, it's always interesting. I did a, I did a rehab course. Oh my gosh. Like 2006, I think in Florida. And I did it with, um, I would say the majority of vets uh, from a veterinary perspective, there was physiotherapists there, there was all kinds, but from a veterinary perspective, I would say m the majority of vets were orthopedic surgeons. Wow. And 
we had, you know, a big debate on why all these animals were tearing cru any cruciate ligaments. Like why, why are cruciate ligaments so prevalent now? And um, I would say the probably 80% of the vets believed that they were, they were autoimmune, autoimmune, autoimmune responses. So that the, that the, the destruction of the ligaments were happening before they actually slipped on the mud or, you know, lost control playing or, or whatever. The dog, like when I was doing my tech stuff, um, we had, we had, the only time we'd ever see any kind of cruciate tears or anything, any ligament tears were in really big obese dogs. We never saw them in Labradors and Bichon Freeze and mixed breeds and stuff. And now it's almost like everything has them, right? And in, in any age and any weight. So I feel like you're doing a really good job you're doing, you're doing everything right. Um, I would, I would add two things to that. And one would be again, to make sure that her immune system is functioning in a homeostasis or a balanced state that it's, that it's not too high because when, again, when it's too high, it's, it's as unhealthy as it being too low. So, um, making sure that she's got really, really good gut health, uh, so that you're feeding her great food and you're, and you're giving wonderful, um, you know, you're giving, you know, good omega threes, but if that gut lining is as she ages or whatever, whatever's going on, if for whatever reason the, that the gut lining is becoming semi permeable, right. Which happens with age, what happens with, you know, being on the ground and closer to um, chemicals and stuff from, from the ground, you're, you, you will never, ever, if I tell anybody anything ever, you will never go wrong with, with making sure the permeability of the gut lining stays intact, stays really, really healthy. That will help your animal and its longevity and its, and its um, ability to fight off different kinds of diseases, including arthritis and things like that, more, probably more than anything. Yeah. So, she, she um, you know, they, they, she, all my dogs are not vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, I don't use chemicals. I use um, nematodes for fleas and ticks. You know, yeah. they don't do anything like that. They, they have had an occasional um, mercury-free rabies shot. I did, she's been on raw for about three or four years completely. Okay. Um, I did, when I was in Chicago, uh, talk to the animal biome people, and I actually bought, they gave me a deal for all six dogs. And Hannah was one of mine that they said needed some work. And so she's just, uh, right before this tear was, almost finished with um their protocol uh for the fecal transplant um that's interesting yeah so she they wanted we were going to do it like uh half the dose for one more month just to make sure um mm -hmm. although they said you could stop right now but you know i thought well heck if we've come this far i might as well yeah yeah you know. but then the tear happened and uh, when i called and talked to them i said should i wait to do that last month till I get her a little bit more stable. And they said, yes. So we kind of put that last little bit on hold, but they, they felt pretty good about her, her gut health after a month on the, the capsules, but mm -hmm. she's, my guys um, eat like uh, some protein grinds. Um, they usually have uh, go between two and four different proteins in the month. They get farm fresh eggs two or three times a week with the shells they get um, raw sardines two or three times a week. Um, and um, well, yeah, I, I, I think what's important to understand is that the, the, 
the bacteria that is isolated in the gut when they when they test, which is like I mean, I've 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 supported what Holly does for 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 years. Um, but there's there are things in like we know now that that dead back even dead dead bacteria has almost like titers almost like a a cellular expression even mm -hmm. without being able to be identified and we can identify we can identify and plant but if we don't protect and support the house we're, we're still we can still be in a fluctuating situation when it comes to overall health okay does that, does that make sense yeah so the bacteria is is vital it, it it is the foundation but if the home of the bacteria is not is is at all permeable which which really doesn't show up a lot in testing. Mm -hmm. It shows up more in symptomatology. So I'm a, you know, I mean, you know, you guys all know that I'm doing cancer research with universities and things like that. So I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to research and labs and all of that stuff. But I, but I never lose sight of symptomatology. I never, ever, ever lose sight of what am I actually looking at. I can look at this piece of paper and I can read everything that it says, but then I can also look at this dog or cat or horse or person and see something completely different than what I'm seeing over here. Right. This, this has to match with this. And if it doesn't, then there is, there's, there's something missing that may not be able to always be detected through a blood test, through a, a, through a test. Right. Right. So, yeah. Right. So, so if I always say, if it's not counterintuitive, if it's not going to cause harm and, and we know that it's important, then we should pay attention to it. So, and for me, that's emotions, right? Like we've got to pay attention to emotions a lot more than we, than we do. And we also need to pay attention to the home within where that that where, where the microbiota live right so right. the permeability of the gut and the integrity of the gut lining so it's what would you recommend in that in that regard what, well, what would you... that's our phytos flora that's the whole okay. reason that we came out with phytos flora is to be sure that we're that well first of all the that we're in we're planting a species oriented probiotic right so there's a lot of incredible people out there doing incredible things they're still using bacteria that isn't canine species right that's not canine specific okay phytoflora is the only one out there that is canine specific and it comes from fecal it's, it's, it's almost like what, what holly's doing she's implanting canine fecal material right Phytoflora is canine fecal material, but it's been fermented. So we remove the pro the possibility of a um, of a of a when you put a whole when you put a whole feces when you're doing a transplant, you're transplanting everything, right? Including like I mean now they know if they do fecal transplants with mice. If if you take it, if you take it from an aggressive mice and mouse and you put it into a mild mouse, that feces into the mild mouse will have the expression and create can create that mouse to be aggressive. Are you following me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's like putting you're you're putting it's almost like a donor. You're taking it's like me taking a kidney and giving my kidney to you my DNA and all my cell expression will go into you and then your body will either accept it or reject it depending on your your immune ability and, and your immune system and your body and how healthy you are and stuff like that. So when you do a fecal transplant, that body has to go through that process of 
accepting it, accepting this donor. So we took it one step a little different where we took the feces, we isolated 11 and then we chose two out of the two back, we chose two bacteria based on their ability to modulate the immune system and fight, um, fight or suppress or keep in bay uh, um, pathogenic bacteria. So that, that was one of the reasons that we chose those two. So, but when you give it to them when it's been fermented, you don't have that fear of it, of it, um, of it acting like a donor, like the rejection part of it. Okay. So that's the, the cool thing about having that probi and, and I like doing both. Like I, I love the, the fecal, the fecal transplants. And then I love the long term using the fermented canine feces probiotic because that's something that you can do on a daily basis. And then the, the fulvic and humic acid in it has, has um, been proven to repair permeability, oh, sorry, repair permeability of, of, the, of the gut line, right? So Henry, um, every time I produce something, I try to look at it systematically and not just focus on one thing. So if I'm going to formulate something, it's not just going to be just for the, let's use liver tonic, right? As an example, like, like phytosphora addresses um, bacteria, it addresses um, gut permeability, it addresses the immune system and modulation. It addresses um, the nutritional aspect of it. It addresses a bunch of different things. Liver tonic is not just a product for the liver. When I, when I formulated liver tonic, it, it supports the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the kidneys. And that's because I look at things sort of systematically, like body systems, so that, because if, if, if your liver is starting to get trashed or your dog's or cat's liver values or kidney values are starting to look like they're being affected, every other organ is naturally affected because it all compensates for its partner organ. So the detoxification process of it, right? So yeah. I, think, I think that, that um, that's how you can look at phytos flora the same way I, I, I formulate everything is from a much higher level than just looking at the gut or just looking at the liver or just looking at the joint. So like, like the joint stuff that you're using right now, mm -hmm. that I created that in my clinic for, for cruciate ligament tears. That's, that's how it happened. Mm -hmm. I started producing it for animals that were, that had torn cruciate ligaments or anterior, or it didn't matter, just ligament, ligament tears. Because if you just, if you look at joints, joints are, um, hang on one second. Um, the, the, if you look at a joint, Think of a joint almost looking like a scaffold. It's not just the joint. So yeah, we can lubricate the joint and we can give oils and we can give, we can give, um, you know, chondroitin and we can give also anti-inflammatories. But what actually supports that joint is muscles, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, everything. It's not just a, it's not just the joint. You, are you following me? Yes, totally. <laughs> So, so when I did jump for joints, jump for joints supports the muscle tissue. It support, it supports the ligaments. It supports the cartilage. It supports the, it, it, it's, it even supports the like meniscus, but it supports the, um, the, the lining of the bone. So it literally supports 
the, the, the part of the bone, the lining of the bone, the periosteum of the bone, which feeds the joint blood and nutrients. And often when periosteum is damaged through anything, through arthritis, through injuries, then that area becomes, um, becomes less, becomes inhibited to oxygen and blood flow. And then arthritis and chronic inflammation all happen because there's, there's a block in the chi or there's a block in blood flow there. So jump for joints literally helps to repair the, um, the lining of the bone so that the bone and the joint and the tendons and the muscles and everything can have proper blood flow so it can actually heal and not heal with scarring and, and things like that. So being on jump for joints, again, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a formula that, that takes into, the, that takes into um, uh, consideration the entire thing of what we need to heal, not just the joint and not just the ligament. So right. you're on the right track with that, absolutely on the right path with that. So I, I'm hearing you say basically to stay on the jump for joints, that's probably going to be for the, for the rest of her life. I'm assuming just because. But not so often, like when she's acute or even the first, you know, first three weeks to a month, she can be on it three times a day. And then once she starts becoming like less and less and really like she's had three, four, six months, of not seeing anything, then you can reduce it probably three months, then you three, four months, you could reduce it to twice a day. And okay. then a month later, you could go to once a day. And then she could, if she's doing awesome, like amazing, then you could just give it to her twice a week. Okay. As a maintenance. And then right. is it the, the phytos flora? Um, I'm going to, I, I want to add that because I understand what you're saying. Should I, should I do that without finishing up the, the other that I was doing? Um, you can finish, you can finish, <clears throat> you can finish the other one. I mean, I don't, I don't, I know lots of people that have done both, right? Because I do really support Holly's work. So, um, you know, I've, I've, I've had people do Holly's, protocol and it's been too much for the dog right like it's the they the the body's rejected it so then they'll yeah. they'll talk to me so we'll start them on phytos flora then put them on on the tra on a transplant and then they wind up being able to completely accept the transplant after after the the the, the gut is sort of in a better condition to be right. able to accept it. So right? as, as I'm weaning her off, can she go ahead and be on the phytos floor too? Or should I wait till she's weaned off the transplant? I, I don't see, I don't see why she couldn't be. There's no harm in asking, asking Holly, asking her what she thinks about that. Okay. But I don't, I don't see any harm in it. I, but again, you know, I think it's always best to ask them and see, yeah. and see what they think if, if they think you should, you should finish it first or not. I'm lucky because I'm really in a place of um, trying to be more preventive with her. Yeah. Because she really has done well on everything so far. And yeah. so I'm really just trying to make sure we're on the right road to get the best, most permanent, complete outcome for this. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. That helped me so much. Thank you so much, Julie. You're wonderful. Well, and it sounds like you're, do you're doing an excellent job. I'm, I'm really I'm happy you, six is hard. I, you know, I, it's hard for me to give supplements all the time. I, I wrote my question and you know, a lot of my supplements I just do on an as needed basis, which isn't yep. always great, but I mean, it's just, you know, I'm well, spending about seven or $800 to feed them. So, so listen to this. Cause I have, I do have a pretty strong opinion about that, especially with animal, because I've worked in rescue for so long, right? Like in my clinic, we did, I don't know, thousands of animals in rescue. Right. And they're, you, you know, they, they can't afford it all the time or they can't, um, 
you know, you just, you just can't get it into them, right? It's just impossible. So I, I think that, I mean, that's the other thing that I did is that when I created my pro products, I created them to rotate them. Yeah. So if you're doing a supplement, like let's say you're doing phytosynergy, right? And then phytosynergy is something that, that if you can afford it, I, I, would, I would love to think of it being every day and sort of the same as phytos, phytos flora. But you can, you can, if you have these supplements, you can, I don't know, whatever you've got, but they should be able to um, address certain things. So you, you should be able to do sort of either one day of this one, one day of that one, one day of this one, one day of that one. And then that, that makes them last longer. So it's less expensive, right? It's more cost effective or you can go, okay, so I'm going to use this one until the jar runs out. That's what I've done with my products is I try to make it as easy to think about as possible. So you do use one jar you run out of it, you go to the next jar, you run out of that one, like a different product. Then you go out of that, like you finish that one, then you can go on to another jar. Don't, don't, um, you might want to find for everybody, either through your food or through um, a supplement to be sure that everybody's got a, a good essential fatty acid profile, right? Okay. So whether you're it's less expensive for you to buy frozen sardines like we talked about yeah and just give everybody a sardine every day right at least they're getting an omega fatty acid daily then the next thing would be a good probiotic and then the next thing would be something to be sure that they're getting amino acids and antioxidants so your your omegas are going to help with heart and eyes and everything your 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 probiotics is going to help with digestion of all the amazing stuff that you're feeding and immune system and then your your um, antioxidants are going to help to derail um your the, the cells becoming rusty that's really what an antioxidant is right it it, it it helps to uh, keep the cells healthier so that the, the, the cells don't um, degenerate as fast. Right. And, and then even if you were to rotate all those three, so you have those three things, but you rotate them even. So, you I know. feel like I do rotate pretty much in the, as far as food, you know, like, like yeah. I said, they get sardines about three times a week. They get tripe every day. Okay, good. Which is a good yeah. um so, um, but you know, I, I'm always looking for better ways to do it. I, you know, I just, I'm trying to do as much as I can. When that girl, girl said that she does, I think phytosynergy, she tries to do phytosynergy twice a week or three times a week. That, that's really helpful because it's, it's got, it's so potent that it, it, the amount of superoxide dismutase in it will really, really help with longevity with keeping cell, the cells healthy. So, you know, even if you were to do something like that and just do it really sporadically, like even start off with giving it to them once a week or twice a week. Okay. Not yeah. I feel, I feel guilty when I give, you know, unless there's a need, I feel guilty if I just give it to my older ones and my little ones, my younger ones don't get it. You know, it's, I, I try, there's some things I've just done to, with my three older ones, but um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's just hard to balance. Oh, and, and, and expensive as anything. Yeah. If you're eating a really good food and you're sporadically giving stuff and you're paying, remember I was saying at the beginning with COVID about paying attention. If you, yeah. pay, I can guarantee you with six dogs, if you can try and pay attention as best you can and not be off like, you're doing something wrong or you should be doing more or you're worrying about something. If you can pay attention and you have the right products and you start to have that gut sense, you can derail so much stuff. It's incredible. Yeah. Well, well thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the extra time to answer my question tonight. No worries.
That's wonderful. I, and I truly did cry when I heard you speak. I just, oh, your heart for, for the what animals. Talking and, about? It just, it just, uh, I, it made me cry. I just thought, wow, this is the most incredible lady I've ever heard talk about stuff like this. Oh, so, thank you for all that you do. And I know everybody on here feels the same way. You're, you're just, uh, we're blessed to have you as a resource. Thank you. Oh, well, I feel equally as blessed to have all you guys supporting me. So, and supporting the bigger picture, which is education and animals and our, in our, in our, our bond with them. Because that's, that's sort of all the reason why we're all here. Yeah. Some of my dogs were in, um, uh, with a, a, like a breeding with the breeder. So they were bred a couple times. And mm -hmm. so I'm connected to a lot of the people that have puppies from my dogs. Okay. And so I always send them and try to get them on the Wednesday night thing and, you know, try to get them, help them educate and, and learn about this so that, that, you know, another generation gets started out the right way. And so um, it's just your, your place has been a great place to send people. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, feeling connected, like as this group, as small as it is, or as big as it gets, or, you know, just that, that, you know, especially with COVID and the weird place that we're in in the world right now, just knowing that, that there's a commonality or a bond or, you know, we're all thinking kind of on the same level or, you know, like you just have a community, which is really important. Yeah. And the last time I taught, uh, I had a question. Um, you gave me um, somebody to consult for one of my dogs. It's got really bad. So I'm just in the process of getting that connection done. I kind of got sidelined when uh, Hannah tore her CCL, but um, I appreciate that too. So it really is a, a beautiful little community. Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty special. And Stephanie's great. I love, she, she's such a great contact and she's a, a great asset for your company. So. Cut it out. She sure is. <laughs> there's, no, there's no doubt about that. Okay, you guys are going to make me upset. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Are we good, Steph? Or? Oh, yeah. You guys just buttered me up. <laughs> taught, me, taught me for the last hour and a half. Yeah, that was, that was totally amazing. Thanks everyone for joining us. I know there's a lot of questions that we didn't get to. I mean, it happens to us every single time. Yeah, Kaylin's on standby though. Yeah. You can always send her a message. She answers the email. I'll type it into the chat. Questions, it's plural. Questions at adoredbeast.com. And she's great. She knows everything there is to know about our products. She can help make a recommendation for you. We've got a ton of resources. Yep. Sarah Griffiths is taking clients like like you guys said we're a community we want to help each other and and we're just we're all doing the best we can it's enough I just saw something from Evan on there he's so funny oh my god Evan. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah just just reach out and and again we're, we're talking about you know doing maybe these longer like just for mine um, we did it once and I think it, it worked out pretty well, but remember we're, we're looking at maybe tweaking it a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. We were thinking of maybe Julie doing her solo ones because you guys seem to really like those the most and then doing something that can help more animal owners, lovers at once. And maybe it'll be a little bit more consumable, binge worthy stuff that you could watch you know, on your lunch hour or something like that, almost like mini courses. Little mini tiny courses, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's kind of what we're cooking up for December-ish, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much more about that. Oh. Thanks for joining Thank us tonight, everyone. We'll see you again. Check out Rodney's check out Rodney's thing on Sunday. Oh yeah, Planet Pause. Thanks yeah. everyone. Good night. Okay. See you later. <laughs>